Welcome to the Campbell Museums. A mundane object like a pair of tweezers has many stories it can tell. In this video, I explore just one of these stories. Think of this video as the abridged history behind tweezers. This video is part of our What's in the Box series, where I pull a box from storage and see what we find inside. So check out the box number two playlist for more. As a small child, I saw tweezers as a tool to remove cactus barbs from my tush. As a teen, those tweezers became a vehicle to beauty and acceptance. Tweezers are just one tool in the vast toolbox of body hair removal. But why do people spend so much time, money, and discomfort on removing body hair? For exactly the reason I overplucked my brows in the early 2000s, to be socially accepted. Body hair is natural and it helps regulate body temperature and protects the body from outside elements like dirt. Though some argue that removing hair helps prevent lice or the formation of body odor. But for most of history, hair removal has mainly been a matter of aesthetics, often tied to cultural beliefs. Bronze Age artifacts show evidence of early hair removal. Early Egyptians encouraged female body hair removal. Women used tweezers made from seashells to get the job done, along with pumice stones and early waxing methods. During the Roman Empire, a lack of body hair was considered a sign of class, and female pubic hair was considered uncivilized. So wealthy women and men removed excess hair. Starting in the 8th century, aristocratic women in Japan began the practice of hikimayu, the act of shaving off eyebrows and painting new ones on. One hair removal trend among Elizabethan women was to remove their eyebrows in an attempt to make their foreheads look bigger. In 1904, a shift happened in America. Gillette released the first safety razor, freeing men from visiting the barber once a week for a shave. Now, men could shave directly from the comfort of their home. But, since personal razors used disposable blades, men had to purchase a constant supply of blades. Money was to be made. Marketing for men's personal shaving products emphasized the idea that a man with a clean shaven face is hygienic, modern, and civilized much like the Romans I mentioned earlier. American women were not to be left out. As women gained more societal freedom in the early 1900s, they also gained freedom of movement as they ditched corsets and heavy skirts for the looser styles of the flapper era. But as often happens in history, when women gain one freedom, another is taken away. Hemlines rose, threatening to reveal hairy legs. Sleeveless garments bared unshaven armpits. By 1915, seeking to expand their market, hair removal companies and women's fashion magazines together promoted the idea that these newly exposed limbs covered in body hair were inherently masculine and indelicate, as well as unhygienic. Removing hair from legs, armpits, privates, and eyebrows continued to grow in popularity throughout the 20th century. By 1964, 98% of American women were routinely shaving their legs. By 1987, the Brazilian wax arrived stateside, once again altering the cultural beauty standards for body hair. Today, hair removal continues to be a booming industry. That said, the hair we choose to keep or remove is a powerful tool of self-expression, signaling how we conform or push back against societal beauty norms. Mundane objects can tell big stories, and these tweezers have a lot to say. What other stories might they tell?